Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Engineering Statics. Uh, today we're going to go over the last section of Chapter 5, which is 5.7, Constraints and uh, Statical Determinancy. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to ensure uh, equilibrium, a body must be properly held or constrained by its supports. Uh, when a body is improperly held, uh, we can subdivide it into two cases. Uh, there's redundant constraint, where sometimes a body has more supports than necessary. And then there are there is improper constraint, when a body does not have enough supports uh, such that it's not realistic. Let's go ahead and go into redundant constraint. Uh, when a body has more supports than necessary, it is said to be over-constrained. This over-constraint causes the system to be uh, statically indeterminate. Where statically indeterminate means the number of unknown uh, external forces or unknown quantities is greater than the number of equations that we have to solve for those quantities. Um, static indeterminate problems can only be solved using the mechanics of deformable bodies. And this is uh, something that we, that we don't cover in this, in this course. It'll be something that you'll see when you take mechanics of materials, which should be the semester after this class. So in general, we're not going to, I'm not going to show, and in this class we're not going to go over how to solve problems that are statically indeterminate, but what is key is being able to identify that a problem is actually statically indeterminate. So an example of a problem that is statically indeterminate is this beam assembly here, where it is it has a uh, applied force of 500 newtons, an applied coupled moment of 2 kilonewtons meters, it has a fixed support at A, and it has an, a roller at B and a roller at C. Now if we look at this problem and we create a free body diagram of it, where we remove the constraints and replace them with the support reactions, we find that we have uh, AX, AY in moment A due to the fixed support. We have a BY uh, due to the roller at B, and we have a CY due to the roller at C. Now, we're, this is a 2D problem, so we know that we have three equations of, equ of equilibrium with which we can use. And if we look at the number of unknown support reactions, we find that we have five uh, unknown uh, support reactions. And so it's clear that there are not enough equations, equations of equilibrium, in order to solve for all of these support reactions. And thus this equation, I mean this, this problem is statically indeterminate. Um, now it's important to note that uh, in the previous video, we do a problem where uh, we have just a beam, one roller, as well as a fixed support. Now in the case of that problem, uh, we, we are able to eliminate that moment uh, at, at the fixed support uh, uh, because of the force at, at point B. But even if we were to do that same approach here, say we were to eliminate the moment A that develops at at the end of the beam here, uh, we wouldn't be able to. First of all, because we have this coupled moment 2k uh, kilonewton meters. And second of all, if this 2 kilonewton meters was not there, there are too many unknowns, even if we remove the, the, uh, the, the moment um, that would develop at that fixed support. So it's important to uh, um, uh, identify and be very familiar with uh, the, the, peculi the, the peculiarness of, uh, of the special case where you can say that uh, a support reaction does not exist due to another support reaction, and then the cases of uh, statical indeterminacy, where there are too many constraints and thus not enough equation in order to solve a problem. Okay, let's look at another example, and this example is just a 3D example where we have this linkage assembly. Uh, and at, on this linkage, it's pinned uh, at point A. Well, actually, it's in a, a smooth collar at, at point A. And it is fixed at point B. 
excuse me, okay? So we know that the fixed support, at the fixed support, we're going to develop a full number of uh, uh, support reactions in terms of translation as well as rotation. So we're going to have six support reactions at B. And then if we look at A, uh, if we were to, you know, separate this body and make it, if we were to truly just look at A and ignore the rest of the body and only look at uh, A, we would find that that support would produce, uh, uh, would allow rotation uh, in a number of directions, uh, but it would prevent translation in the, in the Y as well as in the Z. In addition to that, due to the assembly here, uh, of, you know, if, if, we, if we look at the entire body, we see that uh, due to the support at B, uh, it precludes rotation in some of these other orientations, right? So we're actually able to eliminate uh, some, so the, the moments that would have developed at this pin independently, okay? So now that we've done that, we identify that there's six uh, reactions here. We pared down the reactions at this point to just the translation components uh, due to the special case where we can say that this support prevents uh, moments that, from developing at, at, at this support. Uh, if we count up the number of reactions, we find that, I mean, the, the, yeah, the number of reactions, we find that we have eight unknown reactions. And since this is a 3D problem, we know that there are only six uh, equations of equilibrium. And thus, this problem here is uh, static indeterminate, or statically indeterminate. Uh, so it's important for us to not only mm, uh, know the support reactions that develop at each individual pin, but also to be able to identify when moments cancel out and to truly state if a problem is statically indeterminate or not. So now let's go into improper constraints, which is another type of constraint. Uh, improper constraint, uh, having the same number of unknowns as an equation, as equations of equilibrium, so unknowns equal to, un, equal to equations, does not guarantee that a problem will be stable when it is subject to an applied load. So uh, just because you have the proper number of unknowns does not mean a problem will actually be stable or feasible in reality. And there are some general rules for being able to identify improper constraint. Rule, the first rule, if the line of action of reaction forces are concurrent or go through a single, uh, go through a single point. So if the line of action of all these support reactions go through uh, 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 a single point, then you have a problem. Uh, the example for this is say we have this beam that is pinned at one location and has a roller in between it and, and another location. If we, are to, if we were to replace the supports at A and the support at B and we were to draw uh, the line of action of these forces, then we'll find that the support reactions uh, are, are go through a single point. So they are concurrent. They all go through a single point, point A. And that means that this problem is unstable. Now, uh, outside of that, let's think a little bit uh, more visually. If we, are to, if we look at this, this diagram here, we know that we have a pin at A, and so that allows rotation. And then if we look at B, we know uh, with roller B that it allows the translation and rotation as well. So if we are to look at this beam and think about it in real life, and if we were to hold it up and let it go, we would know or we would observe that this beam would be able to rotate uh, and, 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 and come out of contact with roller B. And so this clearly shows that this problem no longer is a static problem. It becomes a, a, a problem where if it was exposed to gravity, the beam would have an acceleration. And that's not a static problem. It's unstable. Uh, another general rule is for 3D problems. If the line of action of all reaction forces intersect on a common axis, then that means we have an, uh, an improper constraint. So let's look at the example uh, uh, for, for, for this problem. Uh, okay, so we have this L beam, and it is pin-supported at A and B, 
and this is a 3D problem. And it has a force of P applied at the elbow of this, uh, of this L uh, beam. We know, uh, since these are pins at A and B, that the pins prevent translation in the X, Y, and the Z axes. So uh, we can replace those supports with their reactions. Now, if we look at these support reactions, it's clear that we can draw a line uh, that intersects all of these support reactions. So all the support reactions intersect on a single line, the line from A to B. And thus, this problem is improper. Now, again, if we want to use a more visual approach, we can simply look at this problem and see that it's pin supported, and, it's, and pin supports allow rotation. And we have a force that's applied at this elbow. If we were to take this problem and think about it in real life, where there's two pins that are flexible, and we were to hold the body up in, in respect to gravity, and we let it go, we would clearly see that this body no longer is static, that the body would react to gravity and it would uh, rotate. And that means that this body is improperly constrained because it's no longer a static body. Now let's look at the third general rule, which is uh, it's an improper constraint if reaction forces are all parallel to each other and are perpendicular to the applied loads. So let's look at an example for that one. So let's look at this 2D problem where we have a beam and it is constrained by roller A and roller B. And roller A and roller B will produce reaction forces FA and FB. It has, and this, beam, this problem has a force that is applied P at an angle relative to that beam. Now if we were to do the sum of the forces in the y direction, we would be able to perhaps find equilibrium. But if we were to do the sum of the forces in the x direction along this beam, we have no reaction. We have no support reaction that would prevent translation in the x direction. And thus, this problem here is an unstable problem. Another example is this 3D example, where we have an L bracket, which is uh, supported by cables A, B, and C. And it has a force of 100 newtons that is applied in the x direction. If we were to place, replace those cables by the support reactions FA, FB, and FC, uh, we would find that while the forces FA, B, and C would be able to support the weight in the Z direction, there's no support reaction which is able to, that, that exists that would resist the 100 Newton force in the X direction. And thus this again is an improper uh, constrained body. So now that we've gone through uh, 2D and 3D equations of equilibrium as well as the uh, free body diagrams and support, rea uh, support reactions, and we've learned about uh, proper, redundant, and improper constraints, uh, let's kind of go over a general procedure for how to solve three-dimensional problems. Of course, the first thing we want to do is craft our free body diagram. We want to take the image that we're given in the problem and simplify it. We want to draw an outline of the shape. We want to free the body from its constraints and replace those constraints with the unknown reactions that develop in the body. We want to identify or we, we want to list the knowns as well as the unknowns concurrently at the same time as while we're drawing this free body diagram. We want to put in the uh, coordinate system for the problem. We want to put in the dimensional information and the angular information that we have available from, from the uh, given diagram. And then we want to properly label the direction and sense of these various forces, both the knowns and the unknowns, uh, in, in order to, to better understand what's going on with the problem. Um, and finally, once we've crafted a, a, an excellent free body diagram, we need to actually look at the free body diagram, identify, uh, do, do certain moments cancel out, identify uh, using geometry and trigonometry uh, additional angular information that we can extract uh, based on what we're given in the problem. And once we've 
uh, accumulated as much information as we can within our free body diagram, then we can move forward in applying our equations of equilibrium. Uh, in 3D, there are six equations of equilibrium, or the three-fourths and the three-moment equations. And so it's uh, important for us to, uh, before we start applying them, determine uh, the number of, are, are there more uh, unknowns than there are equations of equilibrium. So we look at our knowns and unknowns and say, okay, there's six unknowns, there's six equations of equilibrium, I can solve this problem. Uh, and determine if the problem is statically indeterminate or not. Uh, once we've done that, then we can go about the procedures in terms of solving problems, which is you know, applying the equations of equilibrium, uh, applying the angular information and separating them into their components, so some of the forces in the x, some of the forces y, some of the forces z, some of the moments about x, some of the moments about y, some of the moments about z. Uh, and once we've done that and we've crafted these equations, then we can take these equations and using algebraic procedure, uh, solve for the individual terms for each unknown and, and feed back in the value in order to determine all of the unknowns. Um, and of course, the process for how to solve problems will go over extensively in class. So this concludes chapter five. Uh, I highly suggest that you read section 5.7. Uh, there's a, a number of, you know, there's quite a few details uh, that I don't cover in the video or uh, perhaps I, you know, the, the language I'm using is, is uh, uh, not good enough. So uh, please do read the book, look through the example problems, um, try to do some of the fundamental problems and get yourself comfortable. Uh, in class, there will be a quiz on this material, so make sure that you prepare. Again, my name's Dr. Stewart. Uh, thank you for watching this video and have a great day.